ओम ज्ञान चमदंदस्यांजना शिवकाया Let me at least finish reading and discussing this article, which we wanted to do, and then I rest my case. As I was speaking with Raju the other day, I'm not sure if I'm having any effect on anyone, anyway, in terms of, of changing anyone's lifestyle, such that the we work towards this end, either individually or as a community or as a larger society. And that more than all the words and arguments uh, that, that we may try to push forward, if simply the devotees, when they get an opportunity, they take a visit to one dairy farm, some here in Arizona, nearby. And as we also were discussing, one article was there connected to uh, a gentleman who is part of the Jain community in America. And he wrote one article for his community. It was put into their newspaper some maybe at least 10 years ago. And somehow that came to my attention. And it was about his visit to a dairy farm in America, in North Carolina. And subsequently, more dairy farms when he went back to Mumbai in India. It's a very, very interesting article. Um, quite unique, I, I, I feel, because it's, it's coming from uh, a member of the Indian community, and it's also d describing the, the plight of dairy cows, not only in, uh, in 
modern mechanized country like America, but even in India, and, and how it might even be worse there. So I, I didn't bring that with me tonight. I just wanted to refer to it. Um, because uh -huh. he was also one of these persons who had heard the argument so many times. But when he had first-hand experience, he changed his life on the spot. He became vegan within days, as soon as he had the experience. So as they say, out of sight, out of mind. And again, so many words may come in, but, but when the eye see it, at least for myself, I'm a very visual type of person. I become communicate and, and, and become affected by what I see. Uh, so that may also have the same type of effect. And so I, I would request all of you when, when you get the opportunity. Uh, but there are farms like Shamrock who publicize. You can come and we take you on a tour. You don't want to see some uh, ornamented uh, type of tour like that, that they only show you what they want you to see. But if, uh, if, if you can go and, and visit one, one farm, even smaller ones, uh, just uh, on your own. And um, that may uh, have, have, have a much larger effect. But anyway, um, this is a topic which is growing within within profit society, within ISCOM, all over the world, uh, controversy. And uh, there are different arguments which are which are put forward. Most notably the fact that Srila Prabhupada kept on taking dairy and he had devotees also take dairy from um, public uh, farms. And offerings to the deities with the idea that if Krishna is accepted, then it becomes prasad. And um, nothing is more pure than prasad. And that even the cows receive some benefit by taking the milk and offering it to Krishna on the altar. So two or three, four different types of arguments. Uh, one, perhaps a new one, which was brought forth um, to Balabhadra Prabhu, in which he deals with in his newsletter, I, I thought was very interesting. And so we just want to uh, refer to that. Are you ready, Richard? I'm ready. So this is from, again, this new newsletter, and this article is called Blood Milk versus Ahimsa Milk. And, um, He's just going to start with a little background of this controversy and then his, his answer to, the, to the, uh, the new argument as to, as to why it's okay to buy and, and, and consume milk products from uh, the uh, industrial farms. Okay. For many years, about 46, there has been the undisputed position that devotees can take milk from unproductive cows as long as they offer the milk to Lord Krishna. The offering purifies the milk and gives the cow spiritual benefits. In recent years, this position has been questioned. In recent years, there has been a growing number of vegans, people who are sacrificing their taste for milk and milk products to abstain from milk products because of the milk industry's cruelty to the bovine species. They do not want to support this industry's practices. In light of this growing consciousness, there has been ongoing debate about the practice of ISKCON, Internet Society for Krishna Consciousness, temples using commercial milk. Although ISKCON's founder Acharya, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, 
allowed commercial milk to be used after offering in the beginning of Iskand's development. development. At the time, he also repeatedly said and wrote how important it was to produce our own milk, develop our own farms, and develop restaurants acquiring their milk products from our productive cows. Now, 46 years later, Iskand's farms and cows have diminished in numbers and productivity. At the same time, the position is prevalent that, is, that it is okay to buy commercial milk as long as it is offered to Lord Krishna. This position feeds lethargy to the concept that we need to put money, time, energy into the development of protected cows who produce protected milk. Milk from protected cows has been referred to as ahimsa milk or milk acquired according to dharmic principles. Those principles following righteousness as described in the Vedic scripture. While commercial milk is referred to as a blend milk, as a blood milk because of the cows blood spill in the dairy industry to produce a profit. Commercial milk also has been referred to as a dharmic or milk acquired without dharmic principle. It is so easy to continue to buy commercial milk and more difficult to build, maintain and energize a cow production farm producing productive milk products grains, vegetables, and fruits. But in the long run, the more difficult ways offer a spiritually potent, viable alternative for all conscious mankind. Following is a portion of the debate. Srimad Bhagavatam 5.6.16, Srila Prabhupada. I believe this is from a lecture that Prabhupada gave on Fifth Canto. Because if you look it up in Fifth Canto, it's, uh, it's not there in the purport. Lord Rashabadev, the master of all Vedic knowledge, human beings, demigods, cows, and Brahmins. The quality of cow is a birthright, unlike a Brahman who has to act according to certain qualities. A cow is born, born a cow. You can say a Brahman is not a Brahman if his actions are not Brahmanical. You cannot say a cow is not a cow in any circumstance. You can say a first class, second class, third class cow, but he cannot say not a cow. Now here is the point. If a Brahman is to be killed, would that make his offering adharmic? If a Brahman is mistreated by others, would that make his offerings adharmic? I would say no to both of these. A Brahman's offerings are accepted even though Others may abuse him or even kill him, kill him later. Here is the real point. I would like us to consider, if a cow is to be killed, would that make its milk adharmic? If a cow is mistreated by others, would that make its milk adharmic? I would say no to both these. A cow's milk, a cow's milk is dharma. Gamcha dharma dhagam. The cow yields dharma. Dharma milk, Srimad Bhagavatam 117.3. A cow is eating <coughs> dharma even if others are treating her poorly dinam. Your servant Shyam. So this is the part of this uh, debate that we're back and forth between this uh, devotee Shyam or Shyam Sunda and Balabhadra. So it's a good argument that uh, Prabhupada saying that a Brahman, you know how many times Prabhupada describes uh, and refers to Gita, chapter one, Nyashishtam, Nakarma, Bhagavashaha, that uh, one is to be respected as a member of a particular Varna, not due to their birth, but according to their work and the quality, good and karma. So he's saying that if Brahman is not Brahman in action, then he's not a Brahman. But Prabhupada's saying, but a cow is always a cow. You may have first, second, or third class cow, but the cow is a cow. So Shamatana's argument is that, that milk is always milk. No matter what's going to happen to the cow in the future, if she's being mistreated, or she's going to be killed in the future, 
The milk is dharma. So how you can speak of it as a dharmic, as, as some devotees are starting to do. Uh, so what, what I ask you to do is, in hearing Bhaldavajra's reply, try to understand the bigger picture, the bigger concept that has been presented here. Because as the Prabhupada was also fond of quoting another verse from Mahabharata. Mahabharata. That a philosopher is not a real philosopher unless he has a new philosophy. And that simply by studying books or by arguing by philosophizing, we can never come to an understanding of the truth. Even if the books we study are the Vedas. Because there's so many different angles to look at. For every argument, there's a counter-argument. For the counter-argument, there's a counter-counter-argument. So if, if we look at this argument, we could pose another counter-argument, and then there'll be another counter-argument to that. But what Bola Budgers asking us to do is step back and try to look at a bigger picture rather than these small arguments on that level. What was Shiva Prabhupada asking of us? What was he presenting to us and what was he asking of us? And what are the practical uh, ways in which we could come to that, to that solution? So, now he is starting with the full text and purport by Srila Prabhupada from 1st Canto, chapter 17, text 3, which was um, quoted uh, just at the end of this devotee's uh, letter that we just read. So I will just read that Chapter 17, text 3. Are you there? Uh, Sachin? Yes, Mother. Okay. Well, since you have the book, we'll let you read it, okay? You can read the shloka. Gacha dharma dusya dinam dusyam shuddha padahatam pisasta madhavanam kshamam mabasa so the first line is the line he quoted. Gam chadarma dugam dino. Which means that the cow is beneficial because one can draw religion from her. And dino means poor. Now she's poor because of Maharaj Pariksha. What is the, the context here? He is a, he's a real kshatriya. He's going, touring his kingdom, and wherever there's a Poor living entity, Dina, someone who is being abused, misused, exploited, whether man or animal, doesn't matter, the project. He'll take out a sword and give protection. Of course, there's no chutras to speak of these days. Rather, the, um, as we hear about in the um, later parts of the Bhagavatam, 12th canto, Dasya Padishu Rajushu, that uh, most of the Rajushus, the Chachyas, are Dasyas. They're big thieves. The little thieves and the big thieves in our society. So, rather than giving protection to those who are, who are weak, to those who are weak and helpless, as, as must be, uh, and the five living entities that, that Prabhupada lists, who are, who are the weak and helpless, who must be given protection, who, who can say, what are these five? Children. Children? 
Women. Someone else. Women. Women. Someone else. Old people. Old. Cows. Cows. And. Brahmins. Brahmins. So. The kshatriyas are meant to give protection to especially the everyone, but especially those five. And in, a, in another sense, especially to the humans. And then by, by giving protection to the others, the kshatriyas, they do, then another class, the vaishyas, which is again very difficult to find true vaishyas anymore because Kadishi Govaksha Vanishyam. Their natural propensities and, and, and duties are uh, Goraksha and uh, agriculture and with the extra surplus trade. Um, so we find rather that the Kshatriyas, so-called Kshatriyas, the leaders of society, the uh, Vaishyas, the, the farmers, uh, mercantile people, they are the biggest exploiters, the biggest thieves, and the biggest exploiters, and, 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 and interrogators, and terrorizers of the weaker class. So the Kshatriyas are, are meant to guide and protect the other classes. And then the Vaishyas are meant to especially give protection to the animals, <coughs> and of all the animals, the cows. But we find that in America, for instance, the, 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 the Vaishyas, uh, at least those who are involved with the farming, with the agriculture, and the cows, what do they do to them? The cows, the pigs, the chickens, what have you. The way they raise them in the fa so-called factory farms mm -hmm. are, are like um, um, hells. So Maharaj Priksha was not that type of shantri. He saw there was a low-class person <coughs> beating the legs of the bull dharma. One leg left. And pulled out a sword and said, this is not going to happen in my kingdom. You may be dressed like a kshatriya, only. Let's, let, let's see if you can prove it now, fighting with me. So 